Right, she's having technical difficulties. What does this bag? Knock airport bag look like. It looks like a Lord's airport bag. Right. I found it in. Right. After the storming success of last week's. Where's this camera filming? Because I'm looking over there on the thing. Right. There? Is that yeah, the camera? That must be the camera. That's the camera, look. Yeah, but why do I look like I'm looking over there? Because I'm looking at there and not there. Got a slow, uh, a lazy eye, Kate. Okay. After the, yeah. <laughs> After the storming. All right. Hi, right, bitch. It's right. my show too. After the storming success of last week, I you not say this bit of our last review, sponsored by Tato Crisps. Hint, hint. We this week have Tato a new popcorn. review. We've got a new review from our um, resident reviewer, Katie Quinn. Um, this week she's going to review for us Interview with a Vampire. Oh, yeah. So, you know, take it away, Kate. I'd like to hear your opinions on this film. Well, now, I've wanted to see this film for a very, very long time. And so, I mean, I decided to do it all proper, like, professional. And I, I took some notes down as I was watching it. All right, so bear with me while I, I get my notes for you all. First note, proper gay. Vampires. Gay vampires, but they're not really gay. It's looks some, a bit gay. Yeah. It's some sort of metaphor for under, under overindulgence. I think he has lip gloss on in that picture. He's got lip gloss on. Fair. Or blood. Possibly blood. Oh, blood makes more sense yeah. than lip gloss. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Tom... Yeah. Well, Tom, Gru Tom Cruise... Basically, anyway, right. Tom Cruise is basically some little spon spongy little prick who dines out on people, like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> dines Whoa. out on people. <laughs> and then, like... And then he has no friends because he's a user little bastard who just like takes all he can, they disposes people. So what he does is we know people like that. Yeah, we know we know people, people like that. Yeah, and uh, so basically then he has no friends. He's lo dead lonely. So he, he like he foists himself on poor old Brad Pitt or Louis as he prefers to be known in the film. Brad Pitt would make it a bit confusing if he went by his own name. Yeah, and what makes it really confusing is they swap hair colours in the film. <laughs> like, Tom Cruise has got blonde hair, and Brad Pitt's got black hair. It is meant to go over a long period of time, but and it's, it confuses it's reasonable me. that they would change their hair colour over a long period of no, time. No, I mean, in the whole film, they've got the same... They've got Tom Cruise has got blonde hair, and oh, right. Brad Pitt's got black hair, right. and I kept getting confused when I was watching it. <laughs> which one's which? You know, if it was like a side view of them, you couldn't really tell. And, it, and they've both got the same hair cuts, sort of. They've got long hair. And... Um, so anyway, he's dead, dead lonely because he's a little bastard, and he um, he foists himself on poor old Brad Pitt. And Brad Pitt's like, "What are you doing, mate? What are you gripping me up? Or vampiring me up?" And so he, he launches him into the seat, and he doesn't die, just, just bollocks. And then he, and then he, and then he, um, and then the next day he's like, "Listen, if you want to get with me or not, make your decision." You like, that yeah, it does. Like you know, when you, should, <laughs> you know, like when a boy would like like that, and then the next day, and the girl turns up at the door, and the next day she's like. So, bitch, we're gonna get with me or not, Mister? And that's how it happens. So Tom, so Tom Cruise turns up with Brad Pitt, like you're gonna get with me or not, and Brad Pitt's like, "Oh, mate, you basically raped me last night. What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of this happening in the interview with the vampire. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it does. That is how the film translates. <laughs> translates. It doesn't really happen, does it? Yeah, it does. So he's like, "Oh my god." Don't stalk me. Creepy little man with built up shoes, leave me alone. <laughs> so anyway, they get together and they're a little couple, a happy couple of vampires. And when does Kirsten Dunst come into it? Well, I'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So then, and then, so poor old Brad Pitt, being the spineless little prick that he is, can't ma be man up enough to say, listen, leave me alone, you mad, clingy, needy bitch. Don't want to be with you anymore. But like, typical, typical men in these situations, just going, oh, fuck it, you know. And then, and then they're clearly scouts as well, because they tend to eat a lot of rats. <laughs> so, <laughs> scouts vampires that use people for their own dining out on personal party and gain, and then they're in a shit relationship. And what does the needy bitch girl go and do? Or Tom Cruise? Goes and traps Brad Pitt with a child. Goes Bitches. and bites some kid. Metaphor for, you know, one night stand knocking someone up with a child, that is. Yeah, 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 he does. And then he's like, Brad, I've got you a baby. You can't leave me now. Brad, don't leave me. I've got a child. We need to put her hair in rags so she has beautiful ringlets. And adorn her in satin. And that is how Kirsten Dunst got the job as Marie Antoinette. Because yeah. she had the relevant experience. She had the experience of having ringlets in her hair. <laughs> and corsets. Corsets. And sort of being French. Because it's in New Orleans, isn't it? Yeah. 
And then, oh, yeah, it's period drama as well. This isn't really a review, it's a macro or a micro analysis, analysis of the film. I'd say macro. Yeah. She listened to the film, so I got a D. Yeah, I got a B. Show story. I tell people I got C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine anybody checks. For most people I talk to who don't know that film study is a course. It shouldn't really be a course, so. No. Not now <laughs> that you don't get video stores anymore. Yeah. It was like, I, block, I went in Blockbuster, it was like one film. I like going to Blockbuster now. The one that dropped a Daniel and that. David wouldn't go with me a while ago when I wanted to go and smell the nice Blockbuster smell and rent three DVDs for what three What the nights. fuck has that got to do with Brad Pitt getting trapped with this brown child? <laughs> so, <clears throat> they went and found themselves a little Creole, is that where that is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Nellie Olsen. And she's evil, and then she like becomes so evil and wraps spineless Brad Pitt around her, her little finger that she gets rid of the dad. She's like, she gets rid of, she gets rid of. She got like Daddy Pitt round it, down round the little finger, so she ousts Mummy Cruz. And Mummy Cruz is like, oh, no, and she jabs her up or whatever. Yeah, she cooks her some food, or if it's poisonous, or she brings her a dead person to drink, and then he dies or becomes rotten. And the fight with the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> and then where do all spoiled 19th century brats go? Because it skipped forward now, we're in the 19th century. Oh, yeah, the 19th century. And where do all the spoiled 19th century brats go? Paris. And where do all spoiled 19th century brats, aristocrats, aristocrats, whatever, lose? <laughs> where, where do bad shit happen to them? Where do spoiled bitches in the 19th century lose their luck? In France, in Paris. So she gets Marie Antoinette. But not, because chopping red off. Uh, does chopping red off kill a vampire? I think so. Oh, it it red depends red on who's really going by. Yeah, chops red off. Oh, she got she got a new mummy as well. She forced her dad to get with some other bird, and he's like, oh, I don't want to get with another bird. What the fuck? Leave me alone. I miss John Cruise. <laughs> what? I haven't accepted that in my brain yet. So Mrs. Tom, it's Mrs. Tom Cruise, and then she dies. <laughs> And then they die, and he gets all upset. And then he goes back to America somehow. I mean, if you were to get a boat to America, right? How would you explain to all the passengers that you're not coming out on deck in the day? In right? the day at all. Stupid. Bollocks. You don't have yeah. to have got a submarine. It could have been like shit deck, you know, like the one that's like three, three levels down. You were velvet on. You were on the poop. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Velvet. So. He goes back to America, models, misses his fucking daughter, or whatever, cries because he watches, gets upset because he's never seen, he's not seen the sunlight, sunrise in like 300 years. Goes watch a black and white film with sunrise, pretty sure that's just the moon. Just something <laughs> black and white. <laughs> gets upset about it, and then his crazy bitch Tom Cruise's wife turns up, all like haggard and like. All about Eve or whatever, I don't know. Some film where someone's all upset that they're old now or something. <laughs> I've seen this film before and I don't remember any of this happening. I'm just thinking of Queen of the Damned the whole time. <laughs> You're thinking of like Twilight. Have you seen Queen right? of the Damned? I'm talking of sophisticated vampire films like made by that director, what director, something else that I like. Um, I'm not sure who um, directed it. Tom Cruise. Don't the director's name go up top? Oh. Why does Tom Cruise's name go above everybody else? So I don't know. Was Tom Cruise more the most famous then? Who directed it? Neil Jordan. Oh yeah, Neil Jordan. He's Irish. Um. Oh, I was up to. Yeah, it's a bag of shite. Pat Men, the end's dead good in a sort of like. Some like Antonio Banderas, isn't it? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, Antonio Banderas. What does he do in it? There's a French dickhead in it. She's odd. There's a Spanish dickhead in real life in it. Mm. Oh, shit. To watch it's good. <laughs> it's Kate's favourite film. <laughs> it's like, based on the ending, I'm obsessed with the ending. I like to just watch the film again and I'll fall into the end. She's going to watch it again now. It's, it's pretty much a favourite film of all time. <laughs> it is, I love it. I love it. Do you know what annoys me the most about not watch, never having watched it before? I've wanted to watch it for years, and like, the little goths that he's hanging around with he used to have like long fingernails, you used to think, why the hell have you got long fingernails? And like, oh, it's a vampire finger, I'm like, pretty sure it's not. 
I'm not sure what you think that's got to do with vampires. Have you never watched Scooby Doo? Uh, no, <laughs> no Scooby Doo vampires get about like that. I don't want and then you. this Lestat business, I'm like, people use it as their MySpace names. Like, yeah, that's true. What the hell does that mean? What? I know. This is vampires. Oh, name. I've missed a whole. I need to go back in time and relive my early days. And I think we should do it. fully understand them now. You need to watch yeah. Queen of the Damned. It follows on from this. Has it actually got something to do with it? It's got a Leah in it, she's fit, before she died, obviously. What's it got to do other than vampires? Too? It's the same. It's follow on film. Really? Yeah. Who's in it? A Leah. And? And some guy who's kind of fit. Tom Cruise is in it. Oh, he's the best bit. I fucking hate Tom Cruise. I hate him. But in this film, I kept thinking, oh, Jackie Onassis, or Katie Holmes, whatever she wants to call herself. <laughs> she's well looking. <laughs> Cause he's me. Right. 